Good morning, Money.net Live. Got Rodney Renan. I'm excited about today, Rodney. Uh, talk to me about the markets a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a state of confusion right now. Tech and consumer discretionary leading the way. They're up huge, which kind of makes sense because we're we're going back to going back to the mean. They got crushed last year. Obviously, every, everyone remembers that. But we're we're definitely a little a uh, little over our skis here. I think you agree with me, Steve. But um, I think we're gonna have a pullback. And if someone, if another sector doesn't take the torch from tech and consumer discretionary, look out below. Yeah, I mean, you got to broaden out the spectrum a little bit. You got to have more of a bigger rally if you're going to continue to, to push, right? I mean, back in October of last year, when the markets just seemed that they were going to fall completely out of bed, um, I got bullish. I mean, I got very, very bullish. Um, and of course, now I am for the first time starting to get a little bearish. I'm still staying, I'm still long, but I'm starting to lighten up my load and taking some profits here. No, I agree with you with you 100%. Listen, AI saved the market, guys. When when uh, when they strip out AI and like five or six of these stocks out of the S&P 500, it would actually be flat or lower by 2% instead yeah. of being up. So that's something to really keep an eye on. And they're 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 looking at this as like a dot com type thing and honestly, I am too. You know, you have you have AVGO, Broadcom, you got Nvidia. You got these stocks making like 25% moves, 30% moves. That's insane. That's what little little uh, little dinky stocks with hundred million dollar market caps do not hundred uh, trillion dollar companies i'm just now looking over at the pe ratio of nvidia is 201 yeah i mean i was telling creed last week when we spoke about it listen you guys have a good playbook traders ai is a huge buzzword any companies that's attached to AI and is going to release earnings is probably going to drop AI in their earnings. And you saw what happened in NVIDIA being up 25%. You could buy some calls there. Maybe you could front run it. Maybe you could just pay the offer once that thing hits the tape. But that's the move. And then you probably can fade it. I'm looking at Unity Software right now, up another 3%, up 25% year to date. Um, some of these stocks, Amazon up 50%. All you got to do is put AI in your name, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, Riot Blockchain, they, they know it's going to be Riot AI. You know, that's next. You know, they were a healthcare company. They became blockchain. Now it's AI. Remember, uh, uh, what was it? The tea company out of Long Island? Long Ice Island, tea. Long Island Ice Tea, <laughs> and Ben. Remember, everyone, all of a sudden, everyone got into blockchain and, and uh, weed. I mean, <laughs> if I, I got to just put blockchain, weed, and AI yeah. into your company, and you are good to go, man. You can yeah. go buy your island. Uh, I I'm agree just with that. start a company now. But what's Rod, uh, Rod what's going to stop this? I mean, what's going to stop this FOMO and the bullishness and the craziness here? We're not really seeing a broader market churn, right? We're seeing the VIX at thirteen eighty two down almost a percent here, lowest I've seen. I mean, I've been saying it for a while. If you're looking to protect your portfolio, the VIX is at the lows of uh, all time. What would you do right now? What, what would your what's kind of your your advice right now? I mean, all the risk is to the downside here. So you yeah. got to protect yourself somehow. Either take some off the table, leave some on. It depends what kind of time frame you have. But I, I really wouldn't be long some of these names like NVIDIA and Broadcom and anything that's attached to AI. Honestly, anything that's up like 20% year to date, you might stop getting greedy, you know? 20% a good a good score. I'm but, looking um, at year to date. I'm looking at Royal Caribbean up 84%, Amazon up 50%, Google up 39%, Apple up 38%, Microsoft up 36% year to date. These are some big names have been running here. Um, to me, it, it reminds me of the old words uh, from Greenspan, irrational exuberance. It is irrational exuberance, but you got to remember a lot of these companies that are actually going up, these are real companies. Yeah. So they're not going to go to zero. Like back in the day, like e-toys in 1999, you know, these, these stocks went to Pets. zero. Pets.com, I remember. Yeah, Pets. Yes. yeah whatever. Pets.com, stamps.com. I don't know. Just take take your .com. But the same thing isn't going to happen here. You're probably going to take a huge haircut. But when you take that haircut, there's going to be a lot of people that are underwater on these trades. Yeah. And then it's going to be very difficult. And it's going to take time for it to get back up to these highs. Yeah. And, you know, when you think about it from a perspective, this morning, Creed and I were talking about um, a different sector, and that would be agriculture. Um, we're seeing Kansas City Week telling us that there'll be an, a 60 to 80 year 
um, less crop than we've had in the last 60 to 80 years. Um, inflation is still a problem, especially in the food sector, uh, especially, you know, we're seeing Amazon people are still buying things. The IMF just said that they're telling everybody to continue to raise rates. The Fed's going to meet next week. What are all these little macro things talking about here? I think we're getting at the point where I think the Fed could keep raising rates. And I don't know if they're going to be able to bring these prices down because it's a supply issue. Yep. So if you have a supply issue, all of a sudden the Fed can't go uh, plant uh, agriculture. You know what I'm saying? So right. and people got to eat. So there, there's certain things. I think the prices are what they are. I mean, I'm, I went I was actually in New York City last week and some of these prices on the menus and I lived there for 16 years and I remember it was crazy, but it was just eye popping. Like some, some of these prices for these entrees and yeah, they got to pay their bills and, and that is what it is. I don't really see a pullback. Yeah, but I mean, it seems that uh, a lot of New Yorkers are down here with us down in Florida um, hanging out with us. Um, do you see inflation starting to abate a little bit in the, in the, in the bigger cities? I mean, Listen, Florida, even they're yelling at the New Yorkers because we're, we're used to paying such high prices. They're raising the prices down here also. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, as, it's not as insane as New York City, but I mean, people have money out there. There's been 15 years of pumping and pumping and pumping. You got to remember in the last two years, all of a sudden, Elon Musk became the richest person in the world. So in these last two years, okay, you didn't become the richest person in the world, but you increased your wealth, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50%, you know, a lot of the wealthy people, and they don't care. They're down to pay. Yeah, and yesterday we saw Amazon falling about five bucks a share. Today it's back up uh, $4 a share here. Um, goodness gracious, four forty now a share. So it seems that people are still buying the dips here. I mean, listen, if you were, if you got in, there's really no reason to sell. Like, why would you sell? I mean, we had so much negative news, so many negative catalysts, recession, 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 jobs report comes out. Everyone's confused. You know, we were three over 300,000 jobs. Hey, if people got jobs. They can spend money. So listen, the fed hasn't been successful. No, they have not. Do you think, yeah, no. do you think the fed seems to be a little bit, behind and using old data they're not really using uh up to date i mean they're today the imf said that the eu is in recession um by legal definition cnn said that today the eu is in recession um they're using the legal definitions two quarters in a row of negative gdp growth um but the united states seems to not think that we think that okay with lots of jobs here we're not in recession but yeah we've had uh, consecutive back in uh, last two quarters of, of last year, um, but we didn't say we were in a recession. We're saying it's the weirdest recession ever. Where this can't be a recession. Um, and today we saw thirty six thousand new jobs uh, opening up, or um, you know, adding to the job uh, losses here. Um, we've not seen the president take a take a victory lap today. That's for sure. No, we're not seeing him take a victory lap, but it was very convenient for the White House to change the definition of what a recession is. But, <laughs> right. anyway, but, but anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But the, the government has to be happy. Biden has to be happy. I mean, everyone's been screaming recession, recession, recession. Honestly, all I'm seeing is job losses. Facebook's laying off 10,000 people like every week. Every single one of these tech companies is laying off people. And then all of a sudden we have this jobs number like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You know, I think well, we, did see, we did see 52,000 new jobs in the government uh, on the last job uh, numbers. Um, maybe, maybe Biden's hiding them, hiding them all in the uh, White House. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, Steve, but it's very hard to understand what's going on because everyone I talk to is kind of down in the dumps. Maybe it's yes. just these five or six stocks that are just crushing it. But mentally, everyone's in a recession. I don't know. We and that's a very that. good point. I've been talking about that a little bit, Rodney. It's a very good point you make. Um, what is it that people are, the and I, and I called the issue with Jay Woods, the malaise. What's the malaise that people are feeling right now? I think the malaise is that you're making the same kind of money and everything is 10 times more expensive. I mean, there are hotels that I used to stay in that were $500 a night, $400 a night, that are now $2,000 a night. Mm. Um, I do well, but I'm not going to spend $2,000 a night to go to a hotel. So mm. I'm priced out. 
Um, this is the life I used to live and now I can't live it anymore. You know what I'm saying? Even the restaurants, for example, uh, I used to spend. But that's just it, though. If, if, if uh, that's how recession or in, I would say in a lot of ways, inflation will come down on its own when people just stop spending. Right. And, and people will stop spending. No, people will stop spending. But I think for the for the luxury items and for for like for things that the rich, the rich consume. I don't think those prices are ever going to come down. And that's why it's crushing the middle class because those guys, listen, you have a hundred million dollars or $20 million. You think you, you don't care, care about $2,000. Yeah. yeah. If milk is two bucks or it's two twenty five, like, like, do you really care? Or <laughs> do you really care if you're going to, uh, I don't know, a, a restaurant and the right. bill is a hundred dollars more so you than you think. You think that in this time period that this is what the IMF and the Fed are talking about the separation, right? The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. Yes, that's, listen, that's 100% exactly what's happening. I mean, the middle class, class is getting crushed. The poor people are getting taken care of by the government and the rich people could take care of themselves by investing in NVIDIA and making 30% in, in, in two weeks. You know, reg, a regular person, you know, you put a hundred bucks in, you make 30 bucks. That's not really going to move the needle for you. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is the nature of capitalism and this is what happens. And they're kind of trying to stop that and reverse it with all these rate hikes and stuff like that. But the people that are investing in the market, the institutions and stuff. are Because right. the, the rich already have off. their house. They yeah. don't really care. Yeah. Right. The middle class yeah. don't have a house. So why raise the rates on them? Yeah. Not not only that, Steve, what are you going to do? You know, like I spoke to someone who's really wealthy. He has about 17 million dollars in the market. I was like, what if they pay you a 7 percent interest rate to put you in the money in the bank? He laughed in my face. He's like, I'd rather buy a stock and sell covered calls. Like, exactly. Yeah. But, the, but the average middle class does not know how to sell covered calls. No, they don't. And that's why they're going to get left in the dust because you're going to make 70% while this hot shot's making 30, 40%. Right. Right. Wow. Um, Thanks for the doom and gloom, uh, Rodney, today. No, that's the gloom. <laughs> it's numbers, man. We can't fudge the numbers. 100%. But back to your point of uh, how we keep changing the definitions, we also changed it in 2008 because it was supposed to be a depression, but that sounds depressing. So we named it the Great Recession. The Great you know? Recession, all right. <laughs> So let's just rename us uh, the Doom and Gloom Boys. I, I, yeah, you know, I think yeah. that uh, I, you know, I think a lot of times when, when people look at the markets, um, where it, where are we now? We're thirty three thousand seven fifty. Oh, I remember when it was ten thousand. Not a big deal. Just keep buying, right? Um, you know, this is not that time. I don't think that. I think even the rich are starting to peel some off a little bit. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the gains that they've seen with the numbers that you just rattled off are astronomical right they're they're amazing gains like s p 500 is supposed to re return 11 percent year over year um i mean when you're making that kind of money you got to take at least some off the table and i'm sure they're doing that but listen once it pulls back they're going to look at it like they're getting a deal and they're going to get back in um I, I just don't know what's really really going to crush the market and I just think it's a mechanism that's that's kind of like rigged to the upside. Like, I don't like to use that word, but it just goes up. I mean, and if it goes down, you just close your eyes and buy and then it'll go back up. And yeah. that's always worked until it doesn't work. I just don't know when that's not going to work. Because if we have a crash, the Fed panics and they start slashing rates. So it's like, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to be there. We had a bunch of bank failures and hey, they came in, they, they saved the day. So I, there's no risk. There's, there's, and you're at thirty-two with, trillion dollars, I don't know where the government can keep doing this, right? Listen, I, I don't know our, our debt. Yeah, our debt's out of control. But but Steve, everyone in this country is kind of learning from our government. Credit cards. We use our credit cards like crazy. I mean, we, we're learning from our leaders. And honestly, maybe we're gonna pay this back when we die. When the when the world ends, maybe we're just never gonna pay this debt back. We just keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. Uh, is, that, is that why China's moving into the new digs in Cuba? I mean, listen, China's trying to do whatever they can to try and overthrow us. Don't get me wrong, but it's easier said than done. Let's right. let's see what they can do. They're going to try and take over Taiwan for sure. They need that technology. They need the semiconductor te technology. Hmm. They need the AI technology. Don't kid yourselves. They They don't really care about Taiwan. I think they care about the tech. Right, I agree. And watching the dollar here falling once again, the lows 
of the session 103 38 my goodness gracious uh, that's all i'm getting ready to go to london it's a lot of pints of as i've been saying a beer for me i've been buying it 108 so yeah yeah it's still better than it used to be i used to go there when it was like two and a half two, two and one half. yeah yeah yeah, I moved a lot of moved a lot of pounds over the dollars at that point. Big Mac was like two pounds, you know. <laughs> Royale with cheese, I love it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, Rodney, Renan, thanks so much, man. What an awesome uh, time again. I'll see you next week, man. Good deal, good deal. Have a good one.